Previously on the Chronicles of Rook. Rook, a wandering drifter who traveled with his close friend Hot Dog, had nothing in his name as they wandered the desolate eastern land aimlessly. They heard about the hub to the west and agreed to go there together to start a new life and make a name for themselves. But not long after, they were ambushed by reavers and had to separate. They agreed that they would rendezvous at the hub and from there, they would continue their journey together. Rook eventually arrived at his destination, but Hot Dog was nowhere to be found. He began training and traveled to the surrounding areas, chasing down bounties for cats. When Rook delivered a bounty to the Holy Nation capital, he discovered Hot Dog's fate. He arrived at the hub days before Rook and was enslaved and captured by the Holy Nation. When he tried to escape, Hot Dog was killed by a Holy Nation patrol. Rook swore he would grow stronger and eventually avenge Hot Dog's death, so he continued to hone his skills and eventually traveled east to a slave camp called Eye Socket. He already hated slavers, but finding out the fate of his closest friend made him detest this oppressive trade even more. Rook let his emotions get the best of him and he freed as many slaves as he could and escaped Eye Socket with a new group of freed slaves as part of his team. While traveling back to the hub, they encountered the Holy Nation, who threatened to attack his new Hiver friend. They successfully escaped, but to Rook, this was their first direct offense against him, which drove him to eventually retaliate and become an enemy of the Holy Nation. Rook found a new Raleigh, which was their new base of operations in the Spider Plains, and slowly built it into a formidable home for his men. Their numbers continued to grow, until the Holy Nation launched a full assault to their base. They barely survived and it was only thanks to a Shek patrol passing through that they were able to successfully fend off the attack and capture one of the Holy Lord Phoenix's generals, the High Inquisitor Seda. This was a huge victory for both Rook and the Shek, and with the Holy Nation weakened, the Shek went into an all-out war against the Holy Lord Phoenix. Rook trained six of his best men and became strong enough to join the war against the Holy Nation. They called themselves the Seven Liberators, and after sacking the surrounding Holy Nation territories, they planned on attacking their capital. Rook recruited as many mercenaries as they could find, and with their newly purchased army, they ambushed the Holy Lord Phoenix in his own headquarters, successfully taking him hostage and escaping. Rook delivered him to the leader of the Shek, Asada, the Stone Golem. His gift to her solidified a strong alliance, and with the Holy Nation's head severed, their remaining strongholds crumbled. Rook's mission to avenge his friend was finished, but the toll of this war was heavy on his heart. As he was returning home, he realized that he was fighting for the wrong reasons. The injustices that led to Hot Dog's death were not because of the Holy Nation, but the slavers and the noblemen from the United Cities out in the Eastern Desert who thrived on oppressing the weak for the benefit of the rich and powerful. It was an enlightening revelation indeed. As long as the Slavers Guild in United Cities stood, he couldn't rest. His work was far from over. In fact, the real war has yet to come. Oi, a new customer. Welcome, stranger. We don't get many of your type here, at least not as customers. Where have you traveled from? I'm from the West. I've traveled a long way here specifically to talk with you. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Many people come to see the boss when they want to buy their slaves. We're the finest product here at Eyesocket. Since the fall of the Holy Nation on your side of the land, many peasants have wandered into our desert. Many new slaves that are fresh and strong. The demand has increased all over and we control the majority of the supply. We were worried that the destruction of the Holy Nation would hurt our business. Yes, I would have thought the same thing. Oh, but this bandit rook that everyone's been talking about has caused the nobles to panic and purchase more stock than ever. But you're brave to travel here alone, stranger. Many of your kind get picked up by patrols, or even worse, skimmers or reavers find you first. I'm not worried about you or whatever else hides in this desert to prey on the weak. <laughs> I tell you what, I like you, my friend. Our slaves cost a premium, but I'm willing to give you a new customer discount to get you everything you need. 
I'm not new. In fact, I'm very familiar with your business here. Is that so? I think I'd remember someone like you. Regardless, I'll still give you that discount, as a returning customer. I'm not here to buy your slaves. I'm here to send a message. What? It's him! It's him! He's coming! The seven liberators let my worker approach and get into position! Ah, <sighs> the time has finally come. Are you ready, men? Rook, is it wise for Tao to go in there all by himself? It'll be fine. This is personal for him. Tao wanted it to be this way. What? What is he doing here? The fool. Anyone who attacks us will have the Slaver's Guild in the United Cities retaliate. What if that's the point? I remember this place well. I was captive here for many years before Rook set me free and gave me a new name. Your time oppressing the weak has come to an end. You're an arrogant fool. Seven warriors cannot match the strength of the- An army. Huh? An army. An army! He has a bloody army with him! Everyone comes to see the boss, right? We're here to send a message to Tengu and the slavers. The ashes of eye socket will light a beacon of hope for the oppressed. Tengu will watch from his throne as every slave farm, market, and united city crumbles around him, knowing that his reign will soon come to an end. The holy nation was just the beginning. The destruction of the slavers in the united cities will be the end. Enough of this drabble. Guards, kill this hiver. It's over. We're being attacked from the inside of the base. That's our cue. The revolution begins now. Everyone, let's go. Hey guys, this is Eric with Pixel Rookie, and I'm really excited to share the second season of The Chronicles of Rook with you. Since finishing the first season over a year ago, The Chronicles of Rook has become the most popular series on my channel and I really want to make sure that season 2 exceeds your expectations. With that being said, I decided to spice up this second season by including many mods in the Suki reshader to enhance the visuals. The most notable changes worth mentioning include new weapons and armor sets, the chance of death setting being maxed out, and attack slots times 5 which makes combat much harder and deadlier, especially if you're not fighting with a group. The full mod list is linked in the description below. New characters in this series are altered and named after my patrons. Because this series is pre-recorded, I can't take any submissions for future characters, but if you enjoy this content and want to help support the channel, please subscribe and consider becoming a patron. Even a $1 monthly donation can go a long way, and you could appear in a future story series like this. Well, with all that out of the way, welcome back to the Chronicles of Rook. What I'm trying to say is, it is an overtow. This is just the beginning. Thank you for meeting with me again. It's been weeks since we've defeated the Holy Nation, and we've already seen many changes. A great number of refugees and settlers have been displaced from the aftermath of the war. Many have come to us seeking help and we've taken every one of them in. New Raleigh's their home now. But I keep hearing stories about other groups of refugees that are traveling east and how slavers find and capture them. We've celebrated our victory and had an opportunity to rest, but it's time we take action again. We were lucky with the war against the Holy Nation. They were caught off guard, and thanks to the power of our Sheik allies, we were able to win, but word travels fast and the United Cities will be on guard. As it stands right now, we can't take on the power of the United Cities and the Slaver's Guild. We need to build up our fortifications, train new members, and build an army. Assad and the Sheik are spread too thin from the first war and their focus is on rebuilding. It's up to us to lead the strike against the United Cities. We have a lot of work to do. First of all, the hashish production stops now. It was a mistake to use hashish as a means to fund our warfare. Ryan, we'll need your expertise to forge new weapons and armor. We need to build a stockpile in our armory for the things to come. Tao, we need to continue researching more efficient technologies so we can increase our resource production. 
Everyone else, we need to continue gathering resources and growing our city. With so many new refugees pouring in, we need to build up our infrastructure first and foremost. Once New Raleigh can effectively sustain the demand, we'll continue training. We have much work to do and I don't want us to waste any more time. We will only be able to succeed if we work together. I'm counting on every single one of you to pull your weight. I hope I've made myself clear. Let's begin. Rook's meeting adjourned and they went out to work. Everyone was able to rest after the war was over and felt rejuvenated, but they knew it was time to pick up the pace again. New Raleigh would need more electricity if they wanted to increase their productions. They focused on upgrading all of their wind turbines to be more efficient. On the outskirts of the city, they planned out two battery rooms to store excess energy. The spider planes almost always had a constant breeze going, but now they wouldn't be left in the dark if wind was nowhere to be found. Tao's research on batteries made them quite efficient, these two small storage sheds would be able to hold almost an entire day's worth of power in case of a shortage. There are still groups of people who would find their way to New Raleigh with nothing but the clothes on their back, looking for help. Brooke's policy was to take everyone in that they could, but they were running out of room. They began planning out more buildings to house everyone and have ample space in case more people continued to join them. New Raleigh's walls were spread out far and there was plenty of room for expansion. The construction of four new buildings began. They had plenty of supplies stored up from the war against the Holy Nation, but they were using it so quickly. Rook's men tried working as hard as they could to keep up with the demand for iron plates and building supplies. It was hard work, but nobody complained. Rook felt responsible for the aftermath of the war. Innocent people's lives being affected was an unfortunate but inevitable consequence of this conflict. Everyone knew why they got their hands dirty though. It was for the greater good. They'd continue to help rebuild and make this land a better place for everyone. Their west gate was a little wonky and while they were building up their city, they figured the gate could use some improvements as well. They tore down the walls temporarily and while it wasn't a huge change, it felt much improved. Their hashish production facility was now vacant. They planned on using it as their hospital moving forward. The east wing would simply be lined with medical beds. It was a convenient location for people to go in the center of the main street and they still had problems with wandering skin spiders outside of the walls. This would definitely come in handy once it was completed. The days came and went quickly while progress was being made. New Raleigh was no longer just a base of operations for Rook's men. It was a safe haven for the weak and the oppressed. Just a little bit longer, Rook thought to himself. Just a little more time getting New Raleigh to where it needs to be and then he would begin building an army to travel east. Tengu will feel their wrath soon enough, but for now, they'll continue to prepare for his day of judgment. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Special thanks to all my newest patrons, Prescott5546, Rivenfei, Sir Gawain, Number King 123 Peanut Chief, and Nicholas Darland. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it and a huge thanks to all my patrons who are generously supporting the channel so that I can continue working towards making the highest quality narrative videos that I can, and maybe even be able to do this as a full-time gig one day. Thank you all very much. And as always, thanks for watching, and until next time, have a good one.